After relatively short campaigns, political parties in Israel are preparing for the elections, scheduled to take place next Tuesday. While all the polls and predictions conclude that the current Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, will be re-elected, the parties have been fighting for their strength, either in his coalition or in the opposition. Two parties have made surprise advances in the campaign. Relatively small settler party Abayta Yehudi, the Jewish home, more than doubled the number of seats it's predicted to have in the next parliament, taking seats from Netanyahu's Likud Beitenu alliance, but promising to join his coalition. Labor, a historic party whose leadership established the state of Israel, nearly vanished in the previous elections. But under the new leadership of Shelly Yechimovich, it's attempting to reposition itself as the center-left party, capitalizing on the frustrations that led hundreds of thousands to the streets in the mass protests last summer. <laughs> Dimi Reider is a journalist and contributing editor to 972 magazine. Uh, Labour, like all other uh, left-wing parties, tried initially to capitalize on the movement and get on the bandwagon. But the movement as it was going on was very, very cautious of partisan affiliation. Um, so it didn't really work out. I mean, it didn't allow uh, party presence uh, in any strongly pronounced way in the camps. Uh, they, wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't endorse Labour. And it ended without Labour actually making its mark. The courtship between Labour and the uh, movement began later as, um, as the grassroots movement kind of dissipated and uh, some of its more prominent figures uh, began to look for ways to extend their influence or to continue being involved in the public arena without all those people protesting behind them. While denying it for months, an official spokeswoman of the protest movement, Staff Shafir, joined the Labour Party list, as did Mirav Michaeli, a known TV anchor, and the former head of the National Students Federation, Itzik Shmuli. On Thursday, the real news attended the Labour Party's last mega-event before the elections, and spoke to Staff Shafir about why she joined the party list. The discourse in Israel completely changed. We're talking about many more things than only security. We're looking at our own social security. We're looking at what happened to our society. We're looking at solidarity. But Why do you think that ignoring the conflict is an effective uh, approach? Not ignoring the conflict at all. We're talking about the only difference is that we're not talking only about the conflict. We're realizing that in order to solve the conflict, we also need to develop a much stronger society. Like the protest movement itself, the Labour Party decided to put the political conflict aside in its platform. As the list members named its various aspects, the occupation and ethnic inequalities in Israel were nowhere to be found. We're talking about going back to the 67 borders, um, but keeping the three major settlement blocks. With a few um, changes in territory, um, one territory for another territory. We're talking about a compromise and a solution. Leader Shelly Yechimovich made clear the party's stance by reiterating that one of the chief proposals, if the two state solution fails, namely a one state solution, is unacceptable. <laughs> של מדינה דו-לאומית שמסכנת את החזון הציוני מרחפת מעל לראשנו כל עוד בנימין נתניהו ראש ממשלה זה לא ייפסק While Yechimovich took an oppositional stance, the parts of the labor platform that do deal with the conflict present an almost identical position to the Prime Minister's. In my vision of peace, in this small land of ours, two free peoples live side by side in amity and mutual respect. Each will have its own flag, its own national anthem, and its own government. Two years ago, I publicly committed to a solution of two states for two peoples, a Palestinian state alongside a Jewish state. Some settlements will end up beyond Israel's borders. Now the precise delineation of those borders must be negotiated. Last week, The Real News attended the foreign policy debate at Hebrew University in Jerusalem, where the number two on the party list, Isaac Herzog, spoke alongside Naftali Bennett and representatives of the Likud and Yashatid parties. I think Netanyahu's main failure is that he hasn't presented for the last two years 
He hasn't presented any viable option for a peace process with the Palestinians, even though they may have rejected his offer. But to be on the initiating side, to be proactive, to amass the world behind us, and to show to our citizens that we have tried our best and exhausted all opportunities for peace, is an obligation and a duty for the leader of the country, and Netanyahu has failed at that. You talked uh, t today about the two-state solution, about the Clinton parameters, about the Arab Peace Initiative. Since then, in the last 10 years, there have been um, 150,000, 200,000 settlers put in the West Bank since these initiatives. Don't you think it's time to start looking past the two-state solution, since, especially with the authorization of E1? No, I don't think so. I think that's a defeatist approach. And I think that most of the settlers you're talking about are within the settlement blocks that can be uh, swapped for other land. And Ariel cuts up South Feet. Mali Adumim's master plan cuts the West Bank in half. You're talking about a Bantustan state. I don't think so. That no Palestinian leader can accept. Uh, Mali Adumim can stay with its current size. And the issue of Ariel was even discussed in the Geneva papers and in other papers. I don't want to deal with a specific solution and we believe that the blocks is a viable uh, solution for permanent status. Do you think accepting the settlement blocks is owning up to the Labour Party's legacy in establishing the settlement blocks as part of the alone plan? Is this a I don't think it has to do necessarily with the alone plan. So Labour's with the settlers too, just not all of them. Say that Labour is with the settlers. That's a, a, a comment that has political connotation. Yeah, one of the great processes of the 90s was that the uh, entire left camp in Israel betted everything it had on the peace process and lost. Um, and Shelley Yechimoshi's project was to rescue Labour from affiliation with the peace process and to make it a party that's relevant to everyday concerns in Israel that doesn't drive them away through engaging with the Palestinian issue. Of course, this is something that you can probably only achieve in today's toxic political environment by throwing the baby with the bathwater so she doesn't engage with the conflict at all. The party's appropriation of the J14 movement was laid bare when students began chanting during the mega event slogans from those very protests last summer. While Yechimovic made boisterous statements about heading the opposition and never joining the coalition of Prime Minister Netanyahu, the Labour Party did just that in the current parliament. Labour has a history of joining uh, rightist governments. It's almost never sat in a position when it could help it. Uh, all the people who are now joining Labour in a bit to continue fight against Netanyahu uh, within parliament are very, very likely to, be, find, themselves, to find themselves being courted into a coalition. Uh, within two months, and this will really test the credibility of the J14 people who went into parliament politics. I think that we went to that protest because of Netanyahu's policy. So, of course, we can't sit with Netanyahu in the same coalition. For The Real News, I'm Leah Terachansky with Max Bumenthal in Tel Aviv.